It's a joy for me to be here this morning with you. It's a joy for me to be participating with you uh, in such life-given rhythms uh, you have here in your community. Uh, to be able to take a break from our busy, uh, stressful, studying, hard-working, to come and uh, recenter our hearts in the presence of God, to reorient our souls towards Jesus. What a what a beautiful and rich and life-giving opportunity you have. And uh, my prayer is that we will not waste this time together. I want to start by offering you uh, an image. So uh, asking you to use your imagination to engage with this image I have to offer you. It's midday in Palestine, and the sun is hot. Um, in a cold day like today, it's kind of hard to remember what a hot sun feels like, right? Um, summer days, Palestine, midday, and uh, you are standing by the edge of a river, uh, which happens to be the Jordan. If you've been in Palestine, uh, midday, sun shining on your face, the Jordan is a refreshing sight. But sweat begins to roll down your face and the back of your shirt um, starts getting drenched. You know the feeling? And suddenly, the person who's next to you, who happens to be your mentor, he looks down at the valley, and he sees someone walking at a distance. And this wise man next to you, um, a man who's deeply anchored in God, he uh, transpires God. And he uh, points down the road, and he says, Behold the Lamb of God. Uh, you take a minute to look in that direction, and uh, you don't find a lamb, but you find a man. Um, and this man is not much to look at, but something compels you. Maybe your mentor, John, the baptizer, but maybe something stirs within you. You're compelled to walk down, all the way down uh, this path that takes you away from the river uh, to meet this man. You don't understand it yet, but you know deep inside that something is about to happen. Something is about to change in you and for you. And as you approach him, you realize that this man knows you're there. He knows you are near. And he turns his head towards you and he finds your eyes. Can you picture that? And it's not a comfortable encounter. You get the feeling that this man knows everything about you. He knows uh, everything that's in your heart. The deepest parts that uh, we try as hard as we can to hide, he knows it. And he asks you, what are you seeking? What are you seeking? No hello, no how are you, no good to see you, but how, uh, what are you seeking? Those are the first words that come out of the mouth of Jesus in the Gospel of John. What are you seeking? First word. First words, they carry weight. They are important words because they're the first words. They matter. What are you seeking? What are you seeking? If you were to answer this question this morning, this question kind of combined with an invitation, what are you seeking? What would you say? Perhaps for some of you, some of us right now, the thing we are seeking the most is um, rest, right? After this intense time of studying, of working hard, of living with people that are so very different from us. We need rest. And on the eve of this holiday, the thing we're seeking is the opportunity to eat good food, to uh, slip in and to let down our guard, uh, to breathe, rest. But if you take a moment and let this question sink in a little deeper, uh, what, what are you seeking what are you striving for through your studying, through your time at Covenant College? What are the things that you are pouring your energy into? What are the things that you've realized are the things that are going to bring you the sense of meaning and significance and wholeness and satisfaction? What are you seeking? I think it's a tricky question. Tricky because for some of us, the word seek um, has a bad rap in our stories, right? Uh, it kind of uh, brings a bad taste in our mouths. We know people who seek, uh, and they keep seeking, seeking 
uh, things, seeking to try to figure out life. They seek and seek and they try, they, they try different religions and different churches and different worldviews, but they never find. A seeker, seeking, however, is an idea, is the word Scripture uses to describe you and me, to describe uh, people made in the image of God. We are seekers. That's how we are wired. That's how we were divinely designed. Uh, we uh, have this predisposition to seek. We are wired to seek. We seek community, right? Uh, we were created to find meaning and fulfillment, doing life with others, uh, immersing ourselves in this uh, dynamic reality of knowing and being known uh, by other people. We seek community. We also seek justice. Something inside us yearns to see everything that's wrong being put to rights, uh, to see evil punished, uh, to see what's broken mended, to see systems and relationships being done well. We seek uh, justice. We are wired to do that. We are wired to seek beauty. Um, beauty attracts us. Beauty has power over us. Um, we are captivated by uh, aesthetic beauty. Uh, creation is the primary example of that, isn't it? Um, something inside us gets stirred when we are in creation and we are, are confronted with beauty. Uh, there's a sense of joy that it's kind of hard to explain. But um, there is also moral beauty uh, that compels us, that attracts us. Goodness. Something happens within us when we see goodness uh, playing out. Honor, virtue inspire us. We seek uh, beauty. We also seek fellowship, don't we? Fellowship with others, deep fellowship with others, uh, with um, uh, people living around us. But also we long this deep, transcendent fellowship. We were created to relate, to be engaged with something that's better and bigger and uh, more beautiful and holier. Um, we are spiritual beings, and we long for this deep, connection with God, with the living God. We seek. We seek uh, justice. We seek community. We seek beauty. We seek transcendence. However, if you're anything like me, it, it doesn't take much life experience to realize that our seeking is off balance. Something's not right within us. It's disordered. Our seeking is misdirected. In this journey of seeking, uh, more often than not, uh, we never find. Uh, on the contrary, we find ourselves lost, uh, smaller, more fragmented. But let me tell you this. Scripture has a lot to say about seeking, a lot to say about seeking. And in, in a brief moment, few moments together here, let me just point to you four, four principles, four guiding principles that will aid us in our seeking uh, four uh, guiding principles that will point us to our true north. The first one, every seeking starts with God himself. He is the seeker par excellence. From the very beginning, God seeks. He sought Adam and Eve in the garden. Where are you? Come and have fellowship with me. He sought Abraham from this obscure city, uh, uh, planning to be with him and through him to bring about a healing for the cosmos. He sought Jacob. He sought Joseph uh, as a slave. He sought Moses in the desert. God is the seeker par excellence. He sought his people, Israel, over and over. If you open the Old Testament, that's what you find. God seeking. That's how relationships with God starts. Yahweh is the God who seeks. He goes after his people. He goes after us. That's what he does. Uh, he seeks you and me. That's reality. God seeks. When my kids were younger, uh, it's one of my fondest memories. One of their favorite games was to play hide and seek with us. So we would count up to ten. You know how it goes. They find a good place to hide. But along the way... Um, we know that hiding for them is not an art they master yet, so it's easy to spot the giggles and uh, where they are trying to 
uh, 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 find uh, a place to not let us find them. But inevitably, we find them, and uh, there is laughing, and there is giggling again, and uh, there is words of uh, uh, care. I found you. And eventually, mom and dad will hold them in, in our arms, and uh, this confidence that they care, that we care, that they're loved, that we love them. Hide and seek. Friends, the Father is after you, seeking you. The Father is intent in His pursuit of you. That's reality. Hide and seek is also a game full of spiritual meaning. If you ever played hide and seek, you know that the next step in the game is now it's your turn to seek, right? The roles are inverted. And that's what happened when God finds us, when he seeks us and finds us. Now it's our turn to seek him. That's when our real seeking starts. Principle number two. It's only when we are sought and found that we can truly find or truly seek well. Let me read to you a few verses from Psalm 105. Um, Psalm 105 is a beautiful song uh, where the psalmist... um, retells the story of the people of God, retells the story of God's seeking them. Uh, God seeks them and brings them to life with him. And this is how the psalm starts, verse 1 through 4. Oh, give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. His deeds, the seeking of God towards us, his pursuit of us. Sing to him. Sing praises to him. Tell of all his wondrous works. Glory In his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord is the final command in his strength. Seek his presence always, continually. In other words, God seeks us, his people. He brings us into his arms, to himself, so that now we can begin seeking him, seeking his presence. What does it mean to seek the presence of God? What does it mean to seek the presence of the Lord? Presence is uh, uh, a common translation for the word face. So literally, we're called, we're commanded to seek the face of Yahweh, the face of God. Our seeking, our longing leads us to the face of God. Beauty, justice, community, transcendence, rest, All that will be found in the seeking of the face of God. Yahweh, the creator God, has a face. It should be mind-blowing. And perhaps this is one of those clues scattered throughout the Old Testament, pointing the people of God to a reality that's quite scandalous. God has a face. And one day, the face of God would be visible to the eye. One day, God would become man and dwell in our midst. Third principle, in our seeking. In our seeking God, we will find the face of Jesus. There is no way around it. In our seeking God, we will find the face of Jesus. I wonder if uh, this is what Jesus had in mind when he uh, lets those words out of his mouth. What are you seeking? Perhaps uh, that's what the Apostle John also picked up as he witnessed that encounter. For those who have been sought and saved by God, our response is seeking that leads to the face of God. Okay, let me take a moment to paint another picture for you. So throughout this gospel, the the apostle John tells us that many people, many seekers uh, sought and found in God what they were looking for, the face of Jesus, uh, including Mary, a woman, one of uh, Jesus' closest and most committed disciples. She tasted beauty, she tasted justice, she tasted community, she tasted transcendence in Jesus. But her journey of seeking um, wasn't over. In fact, it became a bit complicated. She was met with confusion, she was met with doubt, she was met with hurt, she was met with pain. At the end of um, the book of John, chapter 20, Our Lord is crucified and buried, and then we find Mary lost in her pain, in her hurt, in her suffering, Uh, tears, 
uncontrollable tears ripping. It's dark, early morning. She finds herself in the garden by the tomb. The stone is rolled over. It's dark. She looks inside and she sees two angels sitting by the bed where the body of Jesus was supposed to be laying. Pain, confusion, doubt, hurting, perhaps disappointment, uh, hopes crashed. Things were fresh in her mind. The previous day she had uh, Jesus by her side. Things were about to happen, but now she looks around and the body is not there. She has an interaction with the two angels and she turns around and she sees a person by the door of the tomb. And she assumes he's a gardener. What an appropriate assumption, isn't it? A gardener tending a garden, new creation springing up and here we find Jesus, a gardener, working through pain and crying and disappointment. And the question he asks Mary resembles so much the question he asks us at the beginning of the gospel. He says, uh, whom are you seeking? Notice, not what are you seeking. Whom are you seeking? John 20, 15. Our seeking has a face, friends. The face, the face of Jesus. Jesus rephrases this question to guide us to a place of finding. Principle four, our seeking is a journey of finding. Finding and seeking and finding and seeking and finding and seeking. It's an ongoing process of knowing and being known, of finding beauty and justice and community and transcendence, to, de to just to be taken to a place to seek again, beauty, justice, community and transcendence. But this time in and with and through the face of God, Jesus. It's a process that um, takes us to newer and deeper experiences. It took Mary disappointment, pain, tears to seek and find. To seek and find Jesus in a fresh way. Uh, no longer just as a teacher, no longer just as a master or a prophet or a king or even a great garner tending to a new creation. Jesus turns to her and calls her by name, Mary. Her eyes are opened and she sees what she was seeking in a fresh, in a new, in a deeper way. Perhaps what deep pain and disappointment, perhaps what it does to us. It's a doorway that takes us deeper uh, into experiencing and knowing Jesus. Seeking and finding, seeking and finding. Never ceasing, seeking and finding. Disappointment, fear, hurt, tears, seeking and finding, seeking and finding. I hope you get the picture. One more thing, this uniqueness uh, in the seeking and finding is the fact that the farther we seek, we get in, the more we realize we have a lot more to find. Uh, to, to use Lewis's words, the further up and the further in we go, the bigger everything gets. The insider is always larger than, the inside is always larger than the outside, just like an onion. Um, Except as we continue to peel it, to, to peel this onion, to go in and in, each circle is larger than the last. Friends, the more we seek the face of Jesus, the more we find the heart of God. The further in we go, the larger it gets. What are you seeking? Whom are you seeking? Better saying, right? Don't waste this time here at Covenant College. We still have time. Yes. Okay. Two warnings and three reminders for us to finish our time together. Warning number one. Don't underestimate seeking. Don't disregard seeking. Truth is, we are all seekers. The question is not if we seek, but what, or better saying, whom we seek. And uh, be careful with the process because, again, truth is, whatever you seek... That's what you become. 
when you seek the things that lead you away from the face of Jesus, uh, and I hope we all know what they are, um, our souls shrink. But when we seek that which leads us closer to Jesus, we get a reward. Our souls are enlarged. We find what we seek. Warning number two. Um, seek Jesus while he can be found. It's hard for young people to realize that uh, time is a limited commodity. Time is a limited commodity. Days are in limited supply. A sense of urgency for all of us is the proper medicine to our slumbering souls. It's urgent. Seek Jesus while he can be found. And realizing that now um, will compel us to a better today, to a fully engaged presence. Two reminders, three, two warnings, three reminders for us to end our time together. As you seek the face of Jesus, um, seek it, but not only to look at it. It's important. Looking is part of the seeking, but seek it so you can interact with it. Uh, and that interaction is one of hearing and speaking, one of giving and taking, one of dying and living. If your interaction with the living God is not a relational one, something is not right. Seek. Grace is offered to those who seek, so seek. Grace is offered in our daily mundane reality. Grace is offered when the Word of God is exposed to us, so seek. Grace is offered when we celebrate the giving of Jesus to us, His body and His blood, so seek. Grace is offered when we engage with Jesus in prayer, so seek. And the beauty of doing that in a setting like Covenant College is that we can do it collectively. Seeking is not meant to be a journey done alone, so seek. Reminder number two, as you seek the face of Jesus, never forget this, that he is seeking you first. He's coming after you. How does that make you feel? He's coming after you. The question now is, what is he going to find? Is he going to find you hiding or you're rejoicing? And friends, as we mature in faith, we become more aware of the presence of God in the little things about our lives. The seeking of God in the little things about our lives. Uh, circumstances that display his care and his love. Uh, the presence of God in the trivial, his kindness through a word of a friend or an attitude or a memory that pops in our minds, uh, the presence of God in the small and you know, sometimes ir irrelevant things of our days, his provision through those little things. As we mature in faith, we become more aware of his seeking. He's seeking you. He's coming after you. Last one. As you seek the face of Jesus, Make sure this is indelible in your minds and in your hearts and in your souls. He is relentless. He is relentless. He'll never stop. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He'll never let you go. So seek. Will you pray with me? Father, we are grateful for you, the great seeker. You who came after us one day, encountered us. And brought us to yourself. You who reminds us over and over, over and over of your love, of your commitment, of your covenant towards us. And we pray, Father. I pray for every man and woman here this morning. That they would find you. That their seeking would lead, would lead them to deeper and more beautiful and, f and larger things. I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen.